Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. I presented two of the classic current sources in my last video. These current sources both suffered from one very significant fault. They both were subject to changes in the current gain of the output transistor with changes in its collector emitter voltage. I will show you how to significantly reduce the effects of this shortcoming in this video. While there are many ways to accomplish these improvements, I am going to present one such option for our given application. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. So, what am I going to do to fix this? Well, let's see. Well, what we need is some sort of way to make this circuit more impervious to the changes in the transistor's current gain. The traditional way to do this is to add an emitter resistor. So, how does it do this? Well, in simplified terms, it acts like negative feedback to the transistor circuit. Let me describe the sequence of events that accomplish this end. When the current gain increases due to the increase in the collector emitter voltage, the emitter current also increases. When the emitter current increases, the voltage drop across the emitter resistor also increases. When the voltage drop across the emitter resistor increases, this increases the emitter voltage. When the emitter voltage increases, two things happen. First, the base emitter voltage decreases, which reduces the base current. When the base current decreases, the collector current also decreases. Second, the collector emitter voltage also decreases, which reduces the increase in the current gain of the transistor. The overall effect of the increase in the transistor's current gain with increased collector emitter voltage is significantly reduced. So, what does this look like? Well, let's start with the single transistor current source. So here is the final circuit. We can see the new resistor in the emitter circuit of the transistor, RE. We also notice that the resistor between the Zener diode and the base of the transistor is also missing. We can do this because of the existence of the emitter resistor. Now, idealizing everything, the base voltage is a nominal 5.1 volts from the Zener voltage. The emitter voltage is 0.7 volts below the base voltage. So the idealized emitter voltage will be 5.1 volts minus 0.7 volts or 4.4 volts. Our target collector current is 10 milliamps. The emitter current is the collector current plus the base current. And there are two ways we could approach this at this point. In some circles, we would just assume that the emitter current is essentially the same as the collector current because the base current, well, relative to the collector current, is pretty small. In other circles, we would choose a current gain appropriate to our transistor and use this to calculate the base current. This way, we include this additional base current in the calculation of our emitter current. So, how much of a difference does this make in the final value of things? Well, it does make a difference, but not a lot. And we will see this a bit later. For the sake of this quick video, I will assume that the emitter current is essentially the same as the collector current. So, the emitter current is approximately equal to 10 milliamps because our target collector current is 10 milliamps. The voltage across the emitter resistor is 4.4 volts as we previously calculated. The resistor value is the voltage across the resistor divided by the current through it and we know the voltage across it is 4.4 volts, and the current through it is 10 milliamps, this gives us a resistor value of 440 ohms. Now, let's see how this performs in LT spikes. So, 
Here are the simulation results. Now, I forced LT Spice to use a current gain of 160, which is more in keeping with the current gains of the transistors that I've been characterizing here on the bench. I noticed that the resulting collector current is 1.5% low when the input voltage is at its nominal 12 volts. In part, this is because we did not include the base current in the emitter current in our calculation. This resulted in a larger value for the emitter resistor. I reduced the emitter resistor value by 1.5% that the collector current was low by. This gave me a value of about 433 ohms. Here are the simulation results with the emitter resistor value changed to 433 ohms. With the input voltage at the nominal input voltage of 12 volts, the collector current is 10.01 milliamps. This is a mere 0.1% high. I like it. When the input voltage varies from 9 volts to 15 volts, the collector current now varies from 9.9913 milliamps to 10.024 milliamps. This is 10 milliamps minus 0.09% plus 0.24%. That is way awesome. Now, let's look at the current mirror. Now we're looking at the current mirror where I have made a similar transformation. Like with the single transistor version, you can see that I eliminated the resistor between the Zener and the current mirror input. You can also see that I added an emitter resistor in the emitter circuit of both transistors. The process of calculating the value of the emitter resistors remains pretty much the same as with the single transistor version. The currents are a bit different from the single transistor version, so the value of the emitter resistor is going to be, well, a little bit different too. The trick here is that both of the transistors should have the same emitter resistor value in order to maintain the same relationship between them. You might be tempted to use a single emitter resistor with the common emitter connection between the two transistors. And yes, this can be done, and it does indeed improve the performance over the version without any emitter resistors, but it doesn't improve as much as it does when each transistor has its own emitter resistor. So how does this simulate out? Well, let's take a look. And here are the simulation results for our current mirror. At a nominal input voltage of 12 volts, we have a Q2 collector current of 10.015 milliamps. This is 0.15% high of our target. I'll take that. When the input voltage is at 9 volts, we have an output current of 9.972 milliamps. This is 0.28% low of our target of 10 milliamps. And with the input voltage of 15 volts, the output current is 10.032 milliamps, and this is a mere 0.32% high of our target at 10 milliamps. This is also a very, very nice result. As you have seen with the simple addition of an emitter resistor, both the single transistor current source and the current mirror are turned into very respectable, stable current sources. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.